So this is um, the stuff from John, and um, I'm going to be reading you some things. And the first thing I'm going to be reading you are recovery things. And uh, the first thing is the power of God. Each of the miracles recorded by John, six of which aren't recorded in the other Gospels, clearly demonstrates God's power. Jesus healed a man born blind. He walked on water and then calmed a storm. He healed a noble man's son without even being there. He raised Lazarus from the dead after the man had been dead for more than three days. Jesus didn't simply tell us about the life of Christ. He made the important point that Jesus is the embodiment of all God's power. That power is promised to us when we come to him in our powerlessness and turn our life over to him. Things that stick out to me just now is um um Jesus is the embodiment of all God's power. And that power is promised to us when we come to him in our powerlessness and turn our life over to him. It's like, you know, I can't I just can't do it on my own anymore. I have to trust God. I have to trust His power to go through me and strengthen me. God's power can be within us. Recovery is based on God's power at work within us. That's true. Jesus gave us several pictures of how we can have God's power. He described how the branch abides in the vine and draws life and power from the vine. He told us that he is the bread of life and that we are to eat the bread, that bread. He said that we made he said that he made in the upper room the holy spirit would be available to teach us, comfort us and empower us daily. And really the only way to do that is to listen to the holy spirit. That's not usually easy sometimes though because we want to do what we want to do. So, yeah, that's usually the reason why that happens. Um, let me see, where's my up again? Um, I lost my place. When we turn our life over to God, the Holy Spirit comes to live within us and take us step by step to wholeness and healing. That's really cool. I like that too. Cause it's true ever since I gave my life over to God like I listen to the Holy Spirit as much as I can and every step of the way he's never been wrong he's always warned me when certain things are happening or about to happen the dangers of denial in Jesus's early ministry large crowds followed him but as Jesus confronted the people with the truth of their sins the crowds gradually dwindled Eventually, as people were unwilling to face the reality Jesus exposed in their lives, they rejected the only one who could help them. To be honest, I was one of those people one time. I didn't want to face that I was certain things. I knew something was wrong, but I didn't want to know exactly why it was wrong. I wanted to continue doing it because it was satisfying my flesh desires. It wasn't really making me feel whole exactly. It was just giving me a temporary happiness. Times have changed, but the pattern of denial remains the same. We begin with some question about the truth, and over time develop rigid resistance to it. It's pretty good. Gradually, our heart becomes hardened, and we no longer see the obvious truth. And that was really close to... Staying a heart in heart if I didn't surrender. Just as he confronted the crowds, Jesus also confronts us with the changes we need to make. It takes courage to be open and willing to face the truth. And many the truth is the first step toward recovery. That's very true. You have to be honest and open about what's going on with you. And if you don't, you're going to feel guilty about lying. And that'll just lead you back to feeling guilty altogether. 
and then lead to self-pity and wanting to change that self-pity and numb it. Hence, you either go back to drugs or alcohol or codependency, you know, it doesn't matter. Addiction really doesn't have to be just drugs or alcohol or it could be sex, it could be, it could be writing, you know, um, it, it, whatever controls you to where it will make your life unmanageable and it will affect your relationships and people, you know, that's an addiction. And in order to stop that addiction, you have to um, go to something greater than you to enable you to make changes and to open your eyes of what you're doing is not right. The Invitation to Relationship Although each of the Gospels shows us the love of Jesus, John, represent, John presented it as a central theme in the upper room. Jesus said that the mark of following him is loving others. See, we need to love others. And that's not an easy thing to do. You know, you can love those that are easy to love. But it's more powerful when you love someone who is not easy to love. And, um, I forget that sometimes. Because I want to love those who love me. You know, because I, I don't like confrontation. But either way, I have to love those who don't love me. That's what I'm called to do, and I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna work hard on that to learn to love others who don't love me, because they deserve love too. They're a sinner just like me, and they need love just like me. Everybody wants acceptance, and if I don't accept that person, then you know I'm no better than a Pharisee, really. I'm not perfect and I'm no better than anybody. I'm just me, child of God, and just working on my recovery and working to just do the right things. That's all I want to do. And I want to help people, but I can't help them fully if I'm not helping myself. He prayed that he would be united in love as he and the Father are. John referred to himself in the Gospel as the disciple Jesus loved. In one of his later letters, John wrote that the greatest evidence of God's presence in our life is our love for others. <clears throat> Excuse me. Central to the recovery process and to our relationship with God is our recognition of God's love for us and our willingness to value and respect others. That's pretty good. We're all children in his kingdom, the ones who are saved and stuff, and um, we have to work together because, you know, we're not going to be perfect, but we need each other. We, we need each other to help us move towards God, you know, encourage each other and tell each other the good stories that we've had and more miracles, you know, that we've had and stuff, and just spread the word, you know, like... Just love each other. No matter how bad things get, just love each other. Yeah. So that would be the recovery themes. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Peace and love.